it makes these stable because they don't have a center so there'd be nothing to grab onto. Since they're all cut from the same, the center circle is perfect for all of them. So all of that's gonna be good. And you cut your work in half by a third. No chance of errors. And then we're gonna also make some extra grooves that's gonna hold these together that's gonna make our tower. So then we can add the blades. Right now it seems a little complicated. It's but not it that be. It'll be fine. All right, for this step, we're basically dividing this into 16 even lines. So you can get real technical with all of your, uh, the, what, what are they called? <laughs> you can get real technical with all of your mathematical equations and stuff. The easy way to do it is to measure the distance between two of the pies on the outer side. I have a flexible ruler here. And then you just divide that in half, mark it, go to the other side, do the same thing. Draw a straight line across. They all should go perfectly across the center here. If you're off by an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, it's not going to be that big of a deal. You want to try to be as exact as possible. Watch your arms. We have, I don't know if you can see the finer ones, but we have eight. We have eight. So we're going to divide these in half and make 16 for our 16 blade design. Again, you can take this as crazy as you want and as many as you want. Take it from there. And you line it up with the opposite side. Make sure that you're coming right across the center. If you did it right, you should go right across that center hole. So what I have here is one and a half inch piece of thick wall PVC. Now, PVC, you don't ever want to burn it or anything like that. So you want to cut this outside. You want to make sure you have a really sharp blade because when you cut this, we're going to be cutting this in half, just like we've done in other videos. When you push this through, you never want your hands close to the side because as you get further down, the PVC will actually try to close the gap. It'll grab the blade and jerk it back. So you want to make sure your hands are far away from it. Nobody should ever be on the back side of the saw because if it does kick back, I have a piece of PVC flying at him. It's a pretty safe process if you do everything right. What we want to do is take this thick wall PVC. This is one and a half inches in diameter. This is the one and a half inch size. You can use uh, two inch if you want. You basically just cut it right in half. Now, a piece of PVC pipe comes in 10 foot lengths. So you want to divide that by three so you can get three out and then cut in half. You get six blades for each 10 foot piece of PVC. That'll save you some money. So that would be roughly three and three, three foot, four inches. So I'm going to go ahead and rip this in half, show you how to do that. And then I'm going to show you how they're going to be installed on the turbine. And so I've measured this pipe. And even though it's a one and a half inch pipe, the outer diameter is just short of two inches. So what you want to do is set your guide to be half of that distance. So we want to go just short of an inch on this. So we're going to put the guide right there. And... Uh, Again, you want to make sure your blade's nice and sharp. You barely want the blade raised, enough to go through in one cut. You don't want to do this in multi-cuts. And you're going to notice that this PVC is really disgusting because it sat in our yard for years. It was just scraps. So I'm actually recycling some material that most people would have probably thrown away. If you, you just want to make sure. You can buy new material for this since you're doing a green project. But here we go. idea to have a second person to help you hold it so you can switch sides. You notice I just kind of eyeballed that cut. 
pretty easy to do. You just again want to make sure that it doesn't get a chance to kick back towards the end of the cut, which is really important. So you should have two half pieces like this. Now, this is going to be what catches the air in the blade design. So we're going to cut these in half because we're going to have... Uh, you going with three? three? Or two. We're going to do two. So we're just going to cut this right in half. This will give us four blades. This will give us eight blades, and I gotta find more PVC to complete the project. Because we'll be, we'll I'm be... gonna try to clean some of that up too, because it bothers me. But on the inside, is it perfect? Yeah, it just this literally. This was actually a part of a field gold that I had when I was a little kid. My brother made for me. So. Uh, so we're recycling it. And we're recycling good. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Halfway done. So what we're gonna do, this is just a scrap circle that I have. We're gonna be putting a 30 degree cut on each one of those marks. So you're gonna have a little uh, divot like that. And then what's gonna happen is your PVC is gonna tuck in there like so. It's gonna lock in there like that. You can get really detailed with the way that you do this, but uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it. It's pretty simple. Just, you wanna go really slow and be careful. Okay, you want your blade to be uh, about a half an inch high. So we have our first cut in there and again this is going to this is going to fit in there like that. You want these to be, these will be kind of tight, but we can kind of see the angle that we have. I'm going to just repeat that over and over again. Make sure you want to get as close to this as you can. Keep your wood nice and straight. All right, so you're going to notice that I have 16 slats that are perfectly placed all the way around at a 30 degree angle to the base of this. Now, if you flip it around to this side, the side that you're going to notice a few of them had some chipping, that's really not a big deal. Now what we need to do is find three points that are evenly spaced. They've got to be 120 degrees apart. You can do four. I've got four rods I'm going to show you. You can get these in all different lengths. These particular rods, they're threaded rods. They're 36 inches, so it's gonna work really well for what we have. This is gonna be what keeps them separated and holds the stacks together. You're gonna to wanna to come in close enough with a quarter inch drill in here. If you had four of them, you could basically just separate them in four easy places. I have three, so I'm gonna do it that way. Four probably would be better. It'd give you a little bit more strength. There's a couple ways that you can figure out where to put them. You can, uh, Take your diameter and find the radius of the circle. You can take a tape measure and run it around, do it that way. Or you can take a flat ruler like this. Since we're outside and I don't really feel like getting real mathy on this, I'm just gonna start with this right here. And you basically, this isn't gonna be super precise, but it's pretty close. So you mark your spot. So I know that that's 60 inches. And then I come around again and 35 inches, so that's 95 inches. So basically all I need to do, find a spot, mark it, divide 95 by three, 96 by three, so we'll just say every 32 inches. So these rods should go in there just like that and they fit nice and snug, that's perfect. 
So what we're gonna do is take these rings apart now. We're done with just about everything. And uh, you can kind of see what's gonna be happening with this. You can see that we put these together. It's real important to make sure that you have these lined up as the cut that they were before because, because the reason being is that these are all going to be just slightly different. So you want them to just be, the, fortunately, the little screw holes that held them all together act as a great guide for that. So you probably want to mark these before you take them apart. You can use a ratchet if you want. Also, if you want to make sure that these never come off, you can actually use, you take uh, two of these nuts and you basically thread them against each other. Or you can use a, a lock washer on the, uh, or a lock nut with a little piece of plastic on it. There's all different ways to do it. I recommend doing that, finishing it with something so these don't pull out or come undone on you. All right, now. We've got that part done. So what this is, is this is basically the skeleton of a squirrel cage. And that hole right there in the center, we know is perfectly centered. So now what we're gonna do is insert a couple pieces of PVC and show you how that looks. All right, and this is what we have. You can see that these are put together. I'm, I'm actually gonna pull this out. Denise painted these PVCs nice and white. Thank you. And you see that it rolls. It's got a nice structure to it. It's getting dirty now. But um, what you're gonna do from this point is, this PVC probably is too short for this, too small. So you can put these in like this and this will create a blade. Another thing that you can do is this. You can use flat slats of wood that are cut down in there like that, and that's gonna create the angle. Now, these are shorter pieces, so you probably want something that's maybe three inches, four inches long that sits, sticks in there. And then you can either glue them in or put a small screw to hold them in. Everything, of course, needs to be weather treated, but this is the basics to get you started. What we're gonna do, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with this. And uh, I think that maybe one of these little slots would I be I think better. these might be better than the PVC, actually. The PVC so, wasn't getting just the right angle. Yeah, the PVC is kind of tricky. You can stick with the PVC. A lot of people like PVC, and it's, it's pretty cool. But now, this is a 2x4 that you slice down. Yeah, this is just a thin piece of a 2x4. Yeah. But we're going to figure that out. All right, so we've scrapped the PVC idea for now. It will work, by the way. We just need uh, probably like three inch piece of PVC. For now, we're gonna be using, these are some scrap acrylic uh, pieces we had around. Again, wood would work for this. The only problem that we're gonna run into is this angle is only 30 degrees. So if you're gonna use a flat piece, you want an increased angle of probably 45 degrees to what we're doing. We're gonna go ahead and put this together at the 30 degrees. That way, we've got some pretty decent wind today. We can actually just see how this spins. Well, these actually wedge in there nicely. Would a wedge in about the same. All right, so here's the uh, vertical wind turbine. It's not super windy out, but it actually works pretty good. Denise got to cut a perfect circle today. All right. And uh, we're gonna have future videos on this. These blades are perfect for this design. You can see it's actually catching the wind pretty good. This was designed.
fine. This angle was designed for PVC. For flat pieces, it needs to be a sharper angle, probably 45 degrees. This is going to get you a good start on this, though, and open your ideas up to what you can do. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.